To wrap up with the niche, uh, I've just respaced this out a little bit just so you can see the stainless steel tray better. And I've put that on the inside of the villa board. Uh, partly just so it represents better, easier for you to see. And of course, like any good detail, we can of course create a, a break. So that means that this niche height could be as big as we wanted to and we're not necessarily confirming that in the detail or not. Uh, similarly, how could we do this without the steel tray, stainless steel tray, but to do it with villaboard? So this is a way that we could do it with villaboard. It's quite easy to have another piece of timber, just a different size, chopped down. So what this is doing is adding an extra blocking, an extra seal, an extra header plate, and in this case an extra jam as well. So it's a double um, stud for the window, which is also a very good idea. And it's making it shorter so that the villa board can go on the outside of that and line up with the plasterboard so the plasterboard can be continuous. The villa board's creating the structure for the tile to be stuck to. And as long as this niche isn't that tall, allowing for the maximum span potential of the villa board, which is probably 600 millimeters, then that should be fine. Uh, that will allow you to have sufficient strength and the ability to waterproof that entire corner as well. Of course, have a look at the standards, the applicable standards and the manufacturer's warranty for all of the, the detailing. Um, this is of course very customized, whereas if we we're using a tray like this, then that would be very much based on the manufacturer's um, detailing and, and what they're suggesting of how you install it. This is partly based on the James Hardy um, PDF that we we're looking at, but of course they haven't done this sort of a niche detail in that drawing, so it's sort of just a continuation of it. This is something that I've done something like this before, um, but again, it does depend on the spacing and the sizing. This, again, the lintel, the size of the lintel is very much dependent on how long this niche is. So if this niche was um, 600 millimeters, then we wouldn't need a lintel like this. If this niche was one or two meters or three meters or four meters, then we definitely need a larger lintel. So head, seal, and then jam detail. So we see it's basically exactly the same, uh, which means in terms of drawing, it's just copy, rotate, and then I just adjusted the way these corners work. Generally, what I'm trying to do is make the junction of the stone less important, less visible. So when we're looking at it face on, we don't see all those junctions. And because I'm using stone, I haven't opted for the external edge. But if you wanted to use that external edge on any of these, and as you can see, there is a lot of external edges. I only need to show half the jam. Of course, I don't need to show the other side because it's just repeated. Um, then that would be also good. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, this is just some of the way that I suggest to do some of this detailing in Archicad. Uh, it's more about the drawing than necessarily the construction terminology. I've been doing this without a lot of resources, so I'm sort of just going off the top of my head. Hopefully this is helpful, um, and hopefully it helps you to be able to create some very smart and beautiful detailing in Archicad.